How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Turf Roof Viking House out here on a very windy day in the woods but luckily got a bit of a gap in the weather in the sense that there's no rain. We had loads of rain this morning and today thankfully it's gone but this permanent wind that we've had all winter is still persistent. Uh, it's a bit sketchy in this woodland to be honest with some of the trees being so dense they're hooking into each other and then pulling each other down and there's there's a lot of deadfall, a lot of wind-blown trees everywhere and the forest floor is just scattered with uh, pine boughs and just snapped branches so it's pretty, luckily where we've built these shelters is, uh, is out in the open but still it's, <laughs> it's keeping me on edge. So today's video is focused on cooking a nice meal on a Swedish fire torch or cooking on a log which is the, the technique I was using was a, a Swedish fire torch. The log itself uh, has been prepared at home and dried uh, so that when I bring it out here, because obviously being a very wet winter, uh, it's nice and easy to get going. It does take a bit of time, but it gets going and um, yeah, I can cook away on it. There are, there's another way of making these where you can make them much simpler out in the woods and I'll show you that down the line in another video. Uh, but the ones that you prepare at home inevitably are going to burn for a lot longer, produce much better flame and, and retain more heat than you would getting one straight out of the, uh, of the woods, which is going to you know, have some sort of moisture in it. Um, very simple to make. I'll show you the clips of that at the end of this. Dad actually made this one. I've made a few before as well, but uh, he did this one in the garage. and it's, it's actually quite simple and quite quick to make. It gets to a good temperature. You can see by the steak it cooked within maybe three to four minutes I'd say just had steak asparagus and some mushrooms nice quick fast easy food people often ask me what food do you cook what food's good to cook in the woods and you can't really go wrong with steak because you can, you know you're not meant to when it's out of the fridge and out of being cold but you can it can last a few days I've certainly have had steak that's a few days uh, out of the fridge out in the woods on mo multiple day overnighters but you know it's it's some people's bodies react differently than mine. 
Uh, let me just run you through this, the, the fire torch quickly because it's still burning down here and this is now an hour and a half later. You can see I've put it in this car wheel here that we made in one of our bushcraft camp episodes of a few, uh, well, probably last year actually. So it's still burning really good. It's still got a very good base to it. And because of the steel wire, the metal wire that we've put around it, it's still gonna be able to hold the frying pan if I wanted to cook even more food. There we go, it's still gonna cook away quite easily. It's not gonna fall away for too long. So that's still burning, like I say, an hour and a half later, I just plonked a fire pan, frying pan on there and cooked away. And you can see that core is pretty much red hot now. And where it's so windy today, it's actually burning a lot faster than it normally would. The wind has actually helped to keep it going. Sometimes they can struggle without the wind. The key is with these, is two things. Firstly, you'll notice at the beginning, I started the fire at the top. That's really important when that I've found when doing Swedish fire torches. Sometimes I've had bits of, um, where I've made a feather stick and I stuck the bark into the gaps. Sometimes I've just put a lighter to them down the side here and they just burn out. You need to get that core hot and really they need to burn from the top down. That's the secret. So that's why I did it. I started the, uh, I've got feather sticks going to get the nice dry wood from those Scots pine branches. And then I popped, shoved loads of them down and in the gaps as well down low. And then the key was to make that fire on the top with a ferro rod and let it burn down and as all those ash and embers burn down then it starts to uh, to flame properly and it burns from the inside to the outside it's uh, something that I've experimented with over the years and I've finally cracked it so by having I took that top wire off and by having that bottom wire fixed it means that I could adjust the logs and pull them out to leave a bit more gap and adjust the air gaps in the sides here and that way you can almost control the flow of the uh, the heat of the flame a bit more and you can slide that up obviously with a glove you can slide the wire up slowly and it pinches it together more which restricts the airflow which then burns it a lot slower but obviously you're then losing a bit of temperature and what I did is the wind is coming from where the camera is now the wind is coming from directly behind I faced the biggest gap of the Swedish fire torch towards the wind because that wind was then blowing all that oxygen and, and air into the middle of the fire torch and giving me a really good flame flame to um, to fry on. Really cool idea, you know, things that you can try differently in the woods and cook differently in the woods. And this, these I've had burned for a couple of hours before. This is starting to, this will start to collapse in a minute and fall down. But then you know you can just let that all cook and then you can cook again on top of that. It's a win-win. So what I'm gonna do now is just roll some clips of dad making this particular this exact Swedish fire torch and I just did a little quick voiceover and explain how he did it and the process that he used uh, it's very easy to do you can either do it with power tools which is quicker or you can do it with hand tools it, it's really up to you um, but the main thing is is it needs to be a dry log no rot you know just seasoned well seasoned and kept dry um, and then yeah obviously you can bring it out to the woods like I say, down the line, I'll show you how you can make one a bit more of a primitive one out here in the woods with, uh, with minimal gear. So let's roll these clips and then I'll catch you guys back here in the woods. Step one of making the Swedish fire torch is to make three cuts in the log. Here, dad is using a reciprocal saw, but you can use hand tools for this too. Be sure to wear the correct safety equipment and it might be worth putting the log in some sort of clamp or vise. Do not do it like Tad is doing here. In step two, we use a splitting axe or maul and gently split the log into separate pieces. Doing it this way helps to get a controlled even split in the logs. For step three, piece the split log back together again like a jigsaw puzzle. Ensure that the pieces are put back in the exact place that they were to begin with. We use some heavy gauge wire or steel cable and wrap it around the split pieces of wood so that they become a log again. But don't tighten the wire just yet, only cut it to length. Finally, for step 5, we make a small wedge. Often we use a piece of kindling and we secure this into the middle of the log and then wrap the steel wire around it to secure it in place. It's important to have a gap in the top of your fire torch to allow space for the tinder and kindling to burn down. 
And there you have it, your Swedish fire torch is made and ready to go out into the woods to cook up some food. I get quite a few questions about the gear that I use and where do I get it, what type of gear is it, what's the name of it and uh, things like that. What I've done is compiled a little, uh, like an Amazon affiliate sh web shop thing, because a lot of my gear I just get on Amazon because it's convenient and Amazon tends to sell most most pieces of camping and bushcraft and survival gear these days. So I, I've compiled a, compiled a list of all my filming gear and everything, the camera I use, the lenses, editing, computer software, as well as all my bushcraft and camping gear. I've put it together in a list on a little web shop uh, on Amazon and you can see that in the link in the description below. Um, just things like the frying pan a lot of people ask about. It's a very good frying pan and not too expensive but really good anti-stick properties. I, I do really like this one. And just general things, you know, basic gear as well as more advanced gear that I've used over the years. It's all in the description below. But yeah, I've been up here quite a bit recently actually. Um, re the previous episode we finished off most of the turf house here. Like I said, I don't think we're going to clay the walls because it's going to be so much effort to clay it. Um, so it's more of an open style shelter rather than enclosed like the Saxon house. Um, but yeah, I think there's going to be an overnighter, first overnighter in this coming soon, hopefully, fingers crossed, that the weather plays ball. And maybe another one in the, the Anglo-Saxon thatched house as well. But yeah, life has been fairly busy with the birth of my daughter, who's now, she's two months old, Eve, or Evelyn is her long name, I've started calling her Eve. And uh, yeah, once I got past the sleep deprivation phase, that was, that was the, uh, where I could start to see light at the end of the tunnel. That first stage is absolutely brutal. <laughs> but it's brilliant, I love it. And uh, she, for those who've been asking, because a lot of you have, she's doing really well, and M, my wife's doing really well. So yeah, that's been really good. Um, I'm starting to get into the flow of my videos a bit more now, and like I say, the builds will hopefully round off the Celtic Roundhouse build soon, and then I'm back out with the camping more and exploring and uh, getting out for those trips for those guys who'd be really patient waiting for the camping trip. So I do appreciate that. So I hope you enjoyed that segment. Um, it's just a little bit of information on how we make our Swedish fire torches. There's a number of different ways you can do it. Uh, that, Like I said, it's a good project. It's fun to do at home and maybe a winter project when you've got some bad weather uh, just to get out there or inside and uh, keep your mind occupied doing something. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you very much. If you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit further, uh, we do have the merchandise available. Today is, I'm wearing the Bushcraft Brotherhood design, uh, which was created last year. If you're interested in joining the Brotherhood, then head on over to taofficial.com. Uh, we ship internationally. There's different sizes, different colors, and things like that. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Dad's channel, TA Fishing. Uh, lots of outdoor content on there as well. Plenty of adventures planned for the summer months, spring, summer months. Um, it feels like we've not really had winter this year. It's just been wet, rainy, windy, and uh, very little frost. It's been really mild. So I think we're either at the back end of winter or we're gonna get something similar to two years ago, the beast from the east, where we'll get some strange snowstorm come in middle of March, which is really rare for the UK. But I could see that happening. But either way, I'm gonna hope to get out there and I'm going to produce a bit more variety or varied content over the summer months, which I think you guys will enjoy. Still outdoor related, but the addition of different things to, uh, to bring you guys some cool entertainment along the way. Thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys soon in the next video.